Well, hello, welcome to Drawing with Fire. I'm Valerie, neighborhood photography artist. I'm drawing with hubby. I'm Cap. And he's feeling a little low energy today. Hopefully, the incense and everything will prop him up. Today, we are going to work on the basic strokes and shading because I kind of feel like I glossed over that or it's pieced here and there in different lives. So, I thought we would focus in. So, I created a I don't want to call it a heat sheet, but it is a sheet of what we're going to look at. And for the toasties, I'm going to make a more detailed one that you can download and print out if you want to have it with you. Um, I think I'm also going to do a blog post for this for pen control to help people out. Hey, Kathy, Andrea, Shirley, Sonia, Gila. Yeah. And I'm also going to do a timestamp, I think, on this live after it uploads. It's going to take a little while to upload. And I'm going to go back and do a timestamp that way. If there's something specific you're looking for, it'll be easier to find. Now, I'm going to burn on the back of the armor, the gauntlets, and you're burning on the back of your lion. Your lion. And here is what we are going to start off with. We're going to start off with, and I'm going to have to keep looking at the screen so I can make sure I pop up everything correctly, and hopefully you can hear us all right. I just realized that. So I'm going to pop it up. We're going to do the C stroke, and that happens with the oops edge of the tip. Let me get the right one up. I take this one down. There we go. We use the edge of the tip, and I probably <coughs> really should heat up my tip. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go with three, just so we can see it on the screen. And let me pop this up so I can see everybody. Alrighty. And I need to angle my tip, my camera, so you guys can see a little better. Now this requires the edge of your tip. Now I like this for shaders. I don't tend to use skews. And what it is, is I'm going to bump up to three and a half. You take your pen and you twist it to the side. And then you make C marks with just the edge. And right now I'm a little hot, but that's so you guys can see. And we just make C's with just the edge of the tip. Now we can also use the tip only, there we go, to do that. And what this is going to do is make it a softer C. But remember, it's always hotter when you first touch down. But just the tip makes it a softer, more feathery burn. Whereas the edge of the tip gives us more detail. So just the tip. You can even go with half the tip. And let's see here. Let's pop that photo up. Why are we not? Let me click everything off except for the one I want. Hopefully. There we go. No, that's the side. <laughs> there we go. This is the top half of the tip. And we can do the C. So think of it as a half oval. We're just using either half the tip, the very end of the tip, or the edge of the tip. And that gives us the different strokes for different textures. Okay? How's that feeling? Um. Now, with this stroke, with the edge stroke, you can turn your tip to either side. It's easier for me to turn mine to the left to get it versus the right, but you can do whichever is easier. And how does it feel? Um, I th good, I think. Okay. But I'm doing it backwards because I'm left-handed. Yeah. So you're going, you're tilting your pen to the right edge. To, to, so he's going to the right because he's left-handed. I'm right-handed, so it's easier to use my fingers and curl the pen. Rotate the pen with just my fingers. So I'm doing a rocking motion, and that gives me the C. And with the tip, that's a little bit more of my hand doing it, whereas... I'm curving with just rotating the pen, just doing this. 
and that gives me that C shape with a tight edge. Now for the X's, now, okay, so I use this, the C when I'm doing fur, when I'm doing hair. Yep, those are my main ones when I'm doing fur and hair. Now for the X's, that's also, <laughs> Morgan is in a mood today. <laughs> <laughs> X's is still the edge of the pin so let me put the edge back photo back on I keep wanting to show you the side and we haven't got to the side yet the X is just quick X marks with the edge overlapping and trying not to make things uniform we can also do that with just the tip and that builds up some texture right now it's a little bit more uniform because I'm just doing the strokes without putting it on anything say fur or hair um, this also works for grass so just crisscrossing getting those different directions in and overlapping them Wherever we touch down first is going to be the darkest. So if I want darker at the bottom, I can go from the edge up. And then I get a darker burn on the bottom. Now, I would use this more with my tip. Just overlapping quick marks to make it softer I haven't changed the heat setting but we start building a texture this way so how you doing with that I'm okay I think okay let's see here what we got next we got stippling I'm gonna skip the stippling to the the next one because we need to switch pins for that we can do stippling with the tip of our shader but it comes out more as dashes than dots so we're gonna go ahead and go over to the oval and this is probably the one I use the most and I use it with a half tip and I use this for most of my shading and I start going in circles around a circle so almost like a flower petal so you've got the center and then I'm just making oval strokes or cir circular strokes around where I started the burn and this way I can blend it in to get it even so most of my shading is done this way with the oval stroke just over and over again you can use more of just the tip but it's going to be a tighter circle and it's going to be darker even when we're going faster because we're using the very end of the pin that's hottest so even though I'm going the same speed and in the same stroke we can see that this is darker by just using the tip hey Wanda now we want this tip, when you're doing the oval stroke, you want the tip as flat as possible. So you have to make it where more of the bottom of your hand is touching the wood to get that flat. Because the minute we angle, we start getting sharper lines. And then we've lost our smooth shading. So flat, we gotta keep it as flat as possible. Just the top half of the tip flat as possible and then every time we can get a smooth burn this also helps going in between the grains sometimes different grains burn differently and we can blend it so it's more even this is a stroke that I use for the dark background more than drags because I hate hot spots in my dark backgrounds and what that means is where it's burned really hot and then lighter all around and it's almost charcoal because your pin's too hot 
that but that is one of my pet peeves for my pieces I don't like it I don't think it looks very clean but if I use the oval stroke with and I can even go with the full tip to uh, let's see here let me get it up there see the side keeps wanting to pop up there we go more of the full tip at a hotter setting will burn e uh, even as well so we can use just the tip we can use half the tip or we can use the full tip with this and this is the uh, stroke wheel we're going to be using for gradient there we go all nice and even now I am going to switch over to the medium ball tip I left you the other ball tips I didn't know which one you wanted to use okay. see Wanda says she gets the hot spots every time she tries to burn flat discouraging to me turn down your heat what which tip a ball tip. Um, okay. That's going to be on your third which row. One, which one? Whichever one you like. What are we doing? We're just doing stippling. Okay. So whichever one you like, it's it's okay. I'm going to turn your heat down. Go with a half tip oval stroke, and just keep overlapping like what I was doing. But right before you touch down, just in case, <coughs> quickly blow on your tip, and that's going to dissipate the heat like the top heat really quickly and touch down just it's like a same motion all together blow on the tip and touch down at the same time and then start doing the oval strokes real quick and then you can start slowing down and blending them in it's all about pen control so stippling i like my ball tips for that and let's see here yep i'm on so three and a half and this is just very quick and this is a great texture for fur that is facing you like on say a dog's nose or even the texture of a dog's nose and I tend to go in circles to keep it from looking too uniform because you can get where it lines up and for stippling texture you don't want that see I've got kind of a line going there so I need to go around it overlap it so touching down very quickly moving in all different directions will give you that really nice stippling texture in fact I wouldn't mind doing a piece just for stippling with stippling the thing with stippling and dark backgrounds for me it's very meditative and I end up getting very dozy very quickly I kind of hypnotized myself in fact I was working on grandma piece on the background this weekend and that's what I kept doing I kept hypnotizing myself and that's when you know you need to take a break so just bouncing around probably could zoom in a little bit more and you can see and feel that texture and there's a lot of uh, a lot of things you can use it for uh, like I said, for short, short fur that's facing you, you only see the end of the hair. And so you can go with that. With stippling, you are going to probably adjust your heat more because you're doing the same speed. But if you want lighter within this, you can do it two different ways. Lower your heat and then w and, and spread out the dots more. And then where you want it darker, you would blend it, you would go over it more. And maybe slow down just a little bit to get it darker. But with stippling, you, it, it is less about pen control for tonal value and, you, and adjusting your heat. So that was at two and a half. I'm going to bump down to one and a half. And kind of get a gradient out. And the size of your ball tip is going to play a role in the size of your stippling. So if you want a smaller stipple, you need to use a smaller ball tip. Because it's just touching the surface with the 
granite is a sphere so it's a very small area that's being tapped down there we go but we got some gradient just by this one adjusting our heat how you doing with that and then further away <coughs> bump up a little bit further away it is the lighter it will look further away the dots are so there's less dots it does look lighter and I did up my heat on that one alrighty so those are the main strokes that I use for I'm gonna switch back over to the spear shader so we can kind of so we can do the gradients gradients are a perfect practice to get that smooth shading I tend to like to go from dark to light it's much easier to control because it's a matter of speeding up your pen versus adjusting the heat whereas when you're doing light to dark it's better to start off with a lower heat and faster pen setting and then <coughs> I tend to slow down but you can raise your heat a little bit so we're gonna start with dark to light so higher temperature um, I'm gonna start with three and by the time I'm done I will have barely a burn for this hey Teresa so that's gonna be your second obviously you know that so I'm gonna start off with a noble stroke I'm gonna pull some heat I'm at three I'm gonna pull some heat and then I'm just going to go slow we're gonna go slower with this because I'm not gonna and I'm doing a half tip oval stroke blend out. I'm going to get that dark in first. And then I'm going to start blending out to my next one, which means my pen needs to go a little dark or a little faster. And if I get some heat, I can go back into the dark and slow down and darken that up. And then bring it back out again. And then when I'm wanting to go lighter again, I speed up my tip, still doing the oval stroke with, the, with half the tip. And then when I want to go to the next value, I go even quicker. I'm trying to overlap those strokes, that way I can blend it smooth. And I find myself following the grain and getting smaller. I lifted my pen, so I'm going to start back up at the top. Or at the darkest. Bring it back down. Speeding up my tip. As I want to go lighter, I need to move my tip faster. Blend them out. And if you have to go back and forth, that's totally fine. Yeah, I have been following the green unintentionally. Let's see, I need a little darker here. And I can raise the tip so that I'm using more of just the tip instead of the half to get that darker. And then start flattening out my pen more. Now I know you don't want to sit and just do gradients, but it will make all the difference because you're practicing your gradients, but you're really practicing your pin control. So now this needs to go darker. Because you do have to fight the grain sometimes. That's just the way wood is. Later, I'm flat now. I've got my pen completely flat, so I'm just trying to soften and blend more. And at a lower heat setting, when you've got your pen 
your shader tip flat on the wood, it tends to burn lighter when it's completely flat. There we go. And then when I want it darker, raise the back end of my pen a little bit. Head more to just the tip. And then start flattening it out slowly. Until it's all flat and that's where your lightest burn is. And then we can go flat back over it just to blend it in. Get it smoother. We do have a line right here that I don't want. So I just use the tip. Try to fill in that small area. This needs to go darker. There we go. I really don't want to see any transition lines in between. I want it to be nice and smooth. Right now I'm flat going back and forth just trying to blend it out. Just using a little extra heat. There we go. So flat at three, moving my pin quickly and we barely have a burn. So when I talk about pen control, that is the biggest thing I think people should learn. There we go. Not completely perfect. <laughs> Woodpeckers in the house. I love stippling. Yeah, kind of sounds like it. How you doing? Mm. Okay, I think. So that's what... Yeah. So let's see. Let's see. That one on the left. Yeah. Yeah, if you just want a little darker here and then quickly blend. Because down here you're good. I think this just needs to be a little darker for, for it to all work. Okay. Get that darkest dark in. And then this is. You, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you can just. Use the more of the tip, but flat. You don't want it angled at the side. You want it flat, flat tip, and do the oval strokes that way. And we'll go from there. Let's see here, tip only. And we will get to the side. I, I keep popping up the side tip, but <laughs> we haven't gotten there yet. I'm just waiting for hubby to catch up. Okay. How you feel about it? Oh, well, I mean, do I feel alright? And do, do you feel like you're getting more control with the pen? Mm, a little bit. Okay. I I know you have to tell yourself, being new, you have to tell yourself, put the pen flat, because you're used to using a pencil or a pen where you're your hand is more angled when you're writing mm -hmm. and that's just how the mechanics of the pen tend to work. It feels more awkward if you're up and down but that's kind of what we need for that stroke. Alright, so I am going to try to go light to dark using the same heat setting. And this is where I talked about blowing on the tip first. I'm going to touch down on my test wood to draw heat out. Then I'm going to blow on the tip. And then slow down as I want to get darker. And I'm using more half tip with this. Just going back over it. And I can always go real quick and smooth this out so I can get that lighter burn. But then I need to slow down here, use more of the half pent tip. See, the more I slow down, 
the darker it gets. You raise the tip, the pit, back of the pen up more. So you're getting yes, the tip. Try to keep that tip flat so we don't catch the edge on the grain. So the flatter you can be, the less likely you are to grab the grain. And then move my pen quicker, kind of blend this out. Go more flat pen, flat tip. Guess for smoothing. I see right now. I was working with the grain. I need to go against it, I think. Guess the tip. Get that darker. And as we go lighter, we bring the tip down. We bring the back of the tip down so the tip goes more flat to the wood, like full tip. This is full tip. Move it up quick. And even full tip slowed down will help us blend. And that's what we're doing. We're practicing pin control and blending. Flat pin. So you wouldn't know I was working on three and I have not adjusted my heat. I've just adjusted how my pin is, how my tip is touching the wood and how fast it's moving. Now I'm just the tip, smaller circles to blend, slow down a little bit more so I can get darker, more of the tip, I'm about half tip, bigger circles, faster speed, See, this is more oval. I'm doing oval with the grain. It may look like I'm just going back and forth, but I'm actually going in ovals. And lighten it up. So you see what I mean by it's easier to start with doing a dark to light gradient? Because one thing with that is if you do get a hot touch down, you can blend it in. Because you got the touch the hot touch down in the dark. Kiss the tip. And bring it out. Oops, have I been off screen the whole time? Hi, Sky. Let's back me out a little bit though. So, that's dark to light and light to dark. So, how are you feeling oh. about. Uh, I understand it a little bit better. Yeah. And do you feel like with having the <coughs> pen more flat that you're getting a smoother shading? Yeah. I versus guess. the angle? I mean, like I said, it mentally our hand wants to adjust slightly and kind of go at that angle because it's how we write. But we need to stay flat for smooth shading. Because the minute you angle just a little bit, that edge will catch the grain and you'll get the choppiness that yeah. will frustrate you. So you have to mentally tell yourself, keep the tip flat, keep the tip flat, because you will feel a difference in the burn. Alrighty, so I talked about the side, we kept showing you the side tip. So let's use the side tip. Now I use this tip, and now I can't even pop it up. <laughs> there we go. I use this for undercutting, and that's where the there it's darker at the edge, 
and lighter as you come out and you're undercutting something that makes it stand out more. So let me, you know, I'm going to quickly draw a circle on my wood just so I have something to follow. Come on pencil, come on, there you are. There you are. You know, it's not going to be a perfect circle because I don't have my template. What are you doing? I'm just going to draw a circle and I'm going to practice undercutting next to that circle. I'll give you my pencil in a minute. It's okay. great for shading underneath. I can, I'm not going to draw a great circle anyway. Well, I didn't either. It's kind of more... I can, I can draw it with a pen, right? No. Oh, with your burner pen. Yes, you can draw it with your burner pen. Well, no, here, do a pencil because the purpose of this is we're trying to get up against it without being on it. We're not outlining it. We're cutting it underneath. So we're using the side of the pencil. I'm going to keep it at three so it's easy to see. Here you guys can see because what's the point? So I'm using the left half of my tip and the edge. So my tip, I'm angled slightly so I can get underneath. I have to turn the board, but I need to turn my pen so it's right up against the graphite of the circle. So I'm just using half the tip with the edge. And if I wanted to make it darker, I'd go back over it, put more of the full pin down, keeping the edge at the base of the circle. And then I can use oval strokes to bring out that shading. But see, it, we didn't outline, and we've got that darker line right up against our subject. So I just cut it in. I undercut it. The higher the heat, the darker it's going to be. I'm going to go ahead and lower to two so we can see more of the difference in the shading. Angle my pen so the tip, the edge, is touching down at my graphite line. Trying to drag. Circle probably wasn't the best choice. Probably a square. So there we go. See, when you've got a higher heat setting, more the pen is hot, more the tip. So this works more when you've got lower heat. How's that going for you? You're going to have to go in the opposite direction than I did. Yeah, I figured that out. I tried to go in the same direction as she did, and that wasn't working at all. Yeah. No, if you're right-handed, you'd go in the direction I did. If you're left-handed, you're going to go in the opposite direction. Hey, Greg. Ah, uh, best group ever. I appreciate that. Is this the place to be? You know better, Greg. So I don't know how well you can see that the line is darker and the shading gradiates out. Again, that's when, um, can I borrow that? I'm going to try a square and see if I can get a better visual with that. And see, this also works with shiny stuff. Not a perfect square, but we'll live with it. I'm going to bump up to two and a half. Yes, so we're a little darker. Let's see here. Angle the pen. We're just using we're using the left half if you're right-handed, right hand half if you're left-handed. Because <coughs> I know that can be confusing. 
if you're left-handed and you're watching all right-handed people and your strokes are feeling a little off let's see here some more flat we're going to bring this out I'm using the tip here just to draw I wasn't going to draw a cute but I think I can get a better visual if I do Got my angle off. Alright. And I'm actually using full tip here and dragging out. And if you notice, as I drag, the wood pulls the heat from the tip, and so we get lighter as we go. Gotta keep it flat for this. 